Hi, I have elements on this model that I'd like to copy, and one of those is the crates that are placed on top of the chimney. Let's hit 7 to go in top-down view, and here I see them on my plan. So I'll hit A and get a plane. Press G to grab and move. Tab to enter edit mode, S for scale, and then S, Y for scaling on the Y axis. And there you go, I have my rough size. And I'm going to go a little smaller and press scale for S. Let's hit three and go reference our image. Here we see the border and I have to kind of retain, I see there are two sizes of, of grills here. So there's a larger size and a smaller size. Uh, I want to kind of retain in my head the image of the larger one and remember the size of the border. Let's go hit seven and hit ES. So extrude and scale. Now it looks to me like this border size is good, but I'll hit SX to reduce the size of the borders on the edge. And now what I can do is hit Alt, and we are going to see the grabs everything. Now, I don't really want a face here, so I'm going to do X faces, and there seems to be one in the back too, so I'll do X faces again. Okay, now we have only our edges, so I'll do Alt click, excuse me, let's do A to select all, and then what I'll do is do... E and Z. Now hit tab and hit G, Z to move on the Z axis. And we're going to move it approximately where my chimney is to make things easier to see. Okay, now we can see the sort of height that we have. So if I do Z and hit um, hover over the 6, which is solid, then I can see what I'm doing. And hit GY, we'll move it over where we want. Now, if I go in wireframe mode, I may see that something different is appearing here. That's because the plan has a smaller grade for this. That's fine, but I'll keep it here for now. So, the next part, we're not going to be referencing images anyway. So, do grab Z. If I wanted to perfectly place it on the flat surface, I'd do face, and then I'd do grab Z, and then it, it would uh, place the flat surface on the top of the other, closest other one. Now if I hit tab and do G, Z, you'll see that our um, snapping is on. So if you shift tab, snapping is off. Then we can have the appropriate height for the grill itself. Now what we'll do next is keep this selected and hit um, cursor, hit um, space to bring the space bar and then cursor to active. That'll bring our 3D cursor here. That means that when we create new objects, they'll go at the same place. I want to create a cube. And hit tab. S for scale. Scale inwards. What I'm mating, making here is the individual bars. Let's scale it down again. To roughly the appropriate size. And then S, Y. Okay. And if I go S, X. I do have to keep in mind it has to be large enough to 3D print. And that looks about right. I think it could be a little, um, a little less tall here. So let's just select our bottom. And I do want to make sure that um, my elements are not exactly, usually you'd want them to be exactly aligned along their edges. But in this case, because I'm 3D printing and because the Bultron modifier that we'll use later um, doesn't allow for that. I want them to be slightly offset. Okay, so once I have something I'm satisfied with, what I'll do is put grab G and then X. Place it approximately where I'd want one of the grills to be. And then go in my modifier properties, add a modifier, array. And then we'll choose the number. So I want about 30 of these. And I want them to be separated from each other. Okay, let's go to 25. Go to 28. There we go. And then factor X. So it looks like 2.6 and 2.7 is roughly right. So I'll do 2.65. Okay. 2.66. There we go. That looks roughly correct. Actually, without much adjustment at all, we got it pretty much right. 
So there we go, that would be our grill. Now to join these together, all we'll have to do is select the other object. And here if I press N, I'll have my um, toolkit on the side. Go to Bulltron. And by the way, that's something you can download. Search Bulltron for Blender and you'll find it uh, in GitHub. Then you can download it and install it. And the instructions are on the GitHub page. Then I'd hit Union. And what this will do is create a single object where all the mesh is part of one object. So you can see here the bars are no longer intersecting. Now I happen to know that probably inside the R slicer, which will be Kira, these elements are close enough together and small enough that the height of them from each other won't matter. So in other words, this uh, frame and the bars will probably be just printed along the surface of the ground, right? Because the height of one of those uh, 3D printed spaghettis is not wide enough to, it, it kind of has to average out where in the mesh it'll place things. Okay, so I'll do file and export with this element only selected. We'll do STL. And we want to include selection only. And then I'll do chimney grate, let's call it large. And hit export STL. Now I just want to remember that this is the folder that I placed it in. And then hit export STL. Now we'll open up Cura. Okay, so I've come into Cura, dragged my model in, and sliced it to the ultra fine setting. And as we see here, it's basically not even able to go inside the geometry and do any of what I said. What this indicates to me is that this STL is just simply too small. It's the printer is not able to accurately enough. Uh, as you can see here, it would just do maybe one and a half extrusions on along the edge. So even though this is accurate to the size that it would be on the scale model, it's way too small to be printed in real life. So one thing that you could do is double the size of it, I guess, and then try again, see how it slices. But then of course you won't be having an accurate model. Now the way to go around this is to make something that's inaccurate, but that's also going to be large enough to print. To do that, I would first of all go in this view, and probably the first thing I would do is scale along the z-axis. I want my part to be thick enough to be printed properly. The thing I'll do is select all and do scale, and just scale it to be a little bigger than it should be. Now these are clearly too small, and what I'll want to do is reduce their count. So let's do maybe 18, and hit one of them, A, and as you can see, since it's an array modifier, it's modifying all of them. So I'll do scale, which is S, scale X, and then we're just gonna grab on the Z axis, grab Z, or GZ, for those of you that are using it. And uh, might even select all again and scale X. And what I'll do is use these for all of my separators or my grill pieces, so let's do S again. It's good. And then the SX, and then GX. I think that's placed about right. And hopefully, hopefully at this size, it's a good size to print. So as you can see, I'm still keeping a little space here so that the uh, model is able to be merged together. So I'll um, do union. There we go. Now we can continue with what we were doing before, export STL. Uh, it's going to be red because we're crushing the previous file. That's fine. Export STL. And then I'll just hit delete to delete this from where it was. And then go in, sorry, wrong folder. My folder here. Get the chimney grate. That's our new file. And you'll see this is the wrong scale. So if I click on it and add a zero and hit tab, then it'll scale it to the right scale. If you go and prepare, you'll have a more decent view. And then hit slice again and see what happens now. Okay, so it looks like it's again refusing to print each of the individual bars. 
I'm not exactly sure. I can tell that still there's there's not much left around the edges, so we could probably increase our size here. So let's do that. Let's do control Z. Control Z. Control Z. Control Z. Okay. Each of our elements is separate. So this is one of these projects where sometimes trial and error pays off. In this case, there was, as you see, a little space that we left between the bottom of the grill gratings and the bottom of the border. And what that did was messed up Kuras that it always wanted to create like a raft at the bottom. So I hit my snapping and set it to face. And then I did G, Z and snapped both faces to be flat to each other. And experimenting with different sizes in Kira, this is what I got. You can see that there is no longer a raft along the bottom of these here. So Kira is no longer trying to fill in the gap. It's all because Kira is trying to find the best way for the printer to get around the 3D model. And sometimes it will not actually choose to accurately depict what you are trying to model. In this case, uh, this is one of the examples of a part that would be very well printed inside of a um, UV resin printer instead of with an extrusion printer. But since I don't have that, then it's, it's more of a, a dream than a reality, but you can see the sort of precision you can still attain even with this type of model. And when seen from a good distance and we're painted with highlights and so on, it'll look good enough to where it looks like a great for sure. So let me just save to file and we're ready to print.